Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about how to talk to buyers. What I'll say is you don't know they're a buyer until you've talked to them. So it could be a visitor to an open house. It could be somebody who is at an organizational event that you went to, that you belong to, PTA night, wherever you find yourself to be. You're not trying to locate a buyer. You're just trying to talk about real estate to anybody and everybody who will tolerate your conversations about real estate. You know, um, I talk about it a lot because it's pretty much all I think about or do. Um, you will get there too, where it is easy to start a conversation about real estate. Um, I have not yet noticed that people turn and walk the other way when they see me coming. So apparently I'm hitting just the right balance still on um, talking about real estate, but not being that lady who only wants to talk about real estate. But that's what part of your job is. That is where you generate organic leads that you don't have to pay for, is talking about real estate to anybody and everybody who you meet. Wearing your realtor pin. Yes, I should be, I should be touching my realtor pin right now. I do not have it on. I should have it on. Wearing your realtor pin. And if you don't have one, they sell them at RBAR. Wear your realtor pin so that people say, hey, what's that, uh, what's that pin you're wearing? Oh, that's my realtor R. I'm a, I'm a member of the National Association of Realtors. Wear a t-shirt when you go to a fun day at your kid's school that says, I love real estate and tacos. You know, whatever it is you want to do that makes it a little easier to enter into a conversation about real estate, those are things you can do. A, a you know, a baseball hat that has some sort of realtor lingo on it. Um, uh, anything you want to do, that is just an icebreaker, okay? But then you need to be prepared with how to talk about real estate when you don't have an icebreaker. And what you have to remember is you're just trying to plant the seed. You know, you're not trying to sell them a house in that moment. And you want to be knowledgeable. So the example I like to give is if you're in a backyard at a barbecue and somebody says to you, hey, Dow, um, I think we're going to be looking for a house in the next six months or so, but I know we want to be in Southwest County. I know we our upper limit of our budget is about $175,000. Dow needs to have done her research on all the areas. I'm not telling you that you need to know every tiny detail of real estate in our market area, but you do need to know if they can buy a house for $175,000 in Southwest County. And the answer may be, oh, that's going to be tough to find, but I'm up for the challenge, okay? Uh, that's going to be tough to find, but I belong to a fairly large firm. I bet I could um, ask the other agents at the firm if any of them have a listing coming up. Those are types of responses that mean you're not on the spot to have to answer them. You're not on your phone. Oh, let me look it up. Let me see. They're buying in six months. You don't need to look up a property on your phone in that moment. You need to just continue the rapport with them. And more importantly, you need to have a reason to get back to them. So if you answer their question right then and there, there will be no reason to touch base with them again, to call them back, to get their phone number, to get their email address. Instead, I have created for myself, actually, to be perfectly honest with you, my daughter did it for me. She has created some marketing materials for me for all the neighborhoods, a lot of the neighborhoods in our market area. There's one on Southwest County. There's one on Grandin. There's one on Salem. There's one on Vinton. There's one on Smith Mountain Lake. And it's just a grid of eight things you might like to know that are in those neighborhoods. And I have put in there a public park an attraction, a restaurant, a fast style restaurant, um, uh, a boutique shop that may be in that area. I try to collate only um, locally owned businesses on this flyer, but that for me is a perfect reason to say to somebody at this barbecue, hey, you know what? I actually have a flyer about all the cool things that I have enjoyed in the Grandin area. Um, if you want to shoot me your email address via text right now, I'm happy to share it with you. It gives me a reason to get their email address. They've now texted me their email address and I can start emailing them. Also, 
they're going to text me their email address so that when I get into 12 other conversations at that barbecue, as you know, I will, I'm going to remember later that I'm supposed to be emailing them that thing. Okay. I'm not the best at remembering to do the thing if I'm not in work mode. Okay. If I'm in the car taking a phone call and I say to the agent, the real estate agent, I'm going to call you as soon as I get back to my desk. I now say to y'all, hey, would you shoot me a quick text message reminding me to call you when I get back to the office? Not because you're not valuable to me, not because I don't have every intention of calling you when I get back to my desk. I'm just going to forget it, y'all. Like, it's just, I, I'm not even going to have any pride about what my memory used to be because I'm working with what I got now. So I'm just going to have to put things in place that help me be successful and help me keep my promises. So by having them text me their email address, I'm going to remember when I get out of there and I check my text messages, I'm going to go, oh my God, I'd actually already forgotten about that. You know, um, so now I'm going to go email them that flyer that I've created. So having some resources available that would be desirable to a customer, because they're a customer until they become a client, having some resources available that I can offer to send them is, has been an excellent way for me to convert people into a buyer because I'm just starting the conversation. I'm already providing value. I'm already providing rapport. And I have now an open line of communication that is roundabout about real estate. And I will fine tune that and customize it until I've got them in a house. But primarily what I want you to remember is that you will not sell houses if you don't talk to people, okay? It is tempting to say, I'm just gonna buy leads because then, woo, I pay money, I have a buyer. You are paying dearly for that. And if you're not connecting with them in a very methodical way, or you're not the first one to get to them, you're paying money for a lead you may not even get. So I would much rather you practice your talking to humans skills, you know? Um, I would much rather you decide that you're going to rent out a room at the library nearest you and you're going to invite first time home buyers to come in and you're going to ask a lender to join you and you're going to have a home buyer seminar just one hour on a Saturday morning and they're going to leave with a couple of flyers about not necessarily just you, but some branded to you materials about the neighborhoods they'd like to live in neighborhoods they're interested in. Um, activities that are going on, upcoming events that Roanoke County's throwing in the next three months, you know, a flyer about the upcoming kite festival, you know, whatever you can get your hands on and brand to you and they're leaving with a folder full of resources that you provided them. Those are ways that you can spend some time and some energy rather than money and start building up that buyer database. I'm going to pause, see if anybody wants to chat about that, anything they're doing. Um, please chime in if you are so inclined. And if you'd like for me to share those neighborhood things I made or my daughter made, um, I'm happy to share those. She made them in Canva. I bought a commercial license for um, the templates. So it's really just plopping in a logo. And I just pull the locally, the local businesses logos off of their Facebook page. Typically their little profile picture is their logo. So I will just download that, plop it in the slot, put in their address and uh, a little description about who they are. And then my, my flyer on Wasina is complete. And then I can pick and choose what I'm going to send people. It's really been nice for me to be able to warm up buyer leads faster once I find out what neighborhoods they're interested in, especially for clients moving in from out of the area. They have truly enjoyed that. And there have been multiple buyers where I just send them the whole kit and caboodle because they don't know where they want to live in this area. So it really helps them start down a path. And I tell them, go to all these businesses on Facebook, like their page. Now you're going to start to see things on your Facebook feed about these local businesses that you, you know, little green hive coffee shop. You're going to start to see what they have going on, you know, and it's a way to get to know a neighborhood before you ever move here.
All right. If nobody has any questions, we're going to get on to setting up script subs. I don't know, try to say it like 10 times subscriptions for buyers. So I'm going to share my screen if y'all would be willing to follow along. <clears throat> All right. Pay no attention to that calendar. I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, okay, so here we are on MLS. You can do this from the front end or the back end. You can put in the contact and then create a search for them, or you can create a search and then assign it to a new contact. So if we have time, I'll do it both ways, but we're going to make up a fake buyer right now. So let's pretend this is someone who just came to me as a customer. And I say to them, well, first, what y'all need to know is when I personally touch base with a new potential buyer client, and I'm just going to show you this on my email real quick. Also pay no attention to my email. It will overwhelm you as well. And Jess will get on me about how she wants to do email management on me. But when I go to my drafts, which also I have them set up as templates. I have something called home search criteria. This is simply an email. Let me get myself where I can show it to you. This is simply an email that I send to new buyer clients that just says, you know, good evening. I'd be happy to start a search for you to find homes that you're most interested in seeing. Would you mind answering these few questions? Now I could go way more in depth with this if I wanted to, but quite frankly, I just want a light touch I want to ask them some real softball questions where they can answer those quickly. And I always insist that if there is more than one buyer, I want them to respond to me separately because I want to know if one of them saying, I have to have 4,000 square feet and the other one saying, we want to stay at about 2,000 square feet. Well, they got some talking to do if they are that far apart on something as simple as square footage. So I will use that as a talking point to chat with them about where their answers aligned and where their answers did not align. But this is just a simple email that I keep in my Gmail draft folder. I'm happy to email you guys all a copy if you'd like. And you can tweak it as you wish. You know, you can customize it, make it suit you better. I also set it up as a template on Gmail. So when I have a new buyer, all I need is their email address. I open up a new email. I put their email address in. I go down to templates and I just insert the template for home search criteria. It puts the subject line in there. It says, good evening. I'd be happy to start a search for you. Every single time I do customize it a little bit. I do change good evening, obviously to good morning or good afternoon. And then I add the new buyer client's name in there. I may add something like, it was so, um, it was so pleasant to chat with you on the phone earlier today, as promised. And again, that's me just laying the groundwork for their vibe about me. Their vibe about me is I'm professional. So I'm going to say it. As promised, here's the email with the home search criteria that I told you I would send you. And then I'm going to list these questions. And when they get back to me with those questions, this is what I'm using to put into the MLS for their saved search that I'm going to associate with the subscription. And I'm gonna explain all of that to you guys, okay? So let me close this down. Let me get our big heads out of the way so I can do what I need to do. All right. So here we are on the MLS. <clears throat> Most often, the way I do it is I set up my new buyer client as a new contact. So I'm going to go to contact management here at the top. The only reason my contact management is up here on this banner is because I went to menu and I selected the star right next to contact management. You can star any of these items. And they will now be across the top of your dashboard, okay? I have chosen what I want up there. They are my most frequently accessed features.
So I'm on to go to contact management. I'm going to click contact management and y'all I promise this one's going to be on the YouTube channel so you can follow along again. So I'm going to click contact management and I'm going to quick add a new person and I'm going to say I'm going to add Betty Buyer who just reached out to me on a Facebook message that said hey my mom said you sell real estate and I'd be interested in looking at houses okay and I'm going to put her in here Betty Buyer at gmail.com I am not going to add a portal yet and I'll explain to you why in a few minutes again this is just Ashley's stylings how Ashley does it okay Jennifer probably does it differently. Donna probably does it differently. It's going to be what works for you. Now, once I've put in their name and their email address, I'm going to click add. I probably need to get the Gmail account, bettybuyer at gmail.com. I use that all the time. I should probably just turn that into a real Gmail account so that I can use it. I'm going to click add. And it's going to bring me up to the contact card for Betty Buyer. I can fill this out as robustly as I wish. I am a little bit short on time. So I typically put in email address, name, and I will likely give myself a couple of notes. And this is where I'm going to say something like um, add new. And I'm going to say came from Facebook Messenger. Uh, her mom recommended me, and then I'll put in parentheses, that was, um, you know, uh, Patty Palmer, okay? This is for me to remember later why I have this client. It may say something like, came as a referral from Rhonda Ellis. Pay her a 25% referral fee when it closes, right? Because if I work with this person for six months, I'm not trying to be ugly to Rhonda. I may just forget, you know, they all kind of get mishmashed up in my brain. So I've got to take notes about people. So here's a spot where I can keep a note about that. And I will just say, you know, save note. <clears throat> there it is. I'm going to go back over to contact details and I'm going to edit the contact. I can add in a mobile phone number. I can add in um an additional contact so maybe betty's fiance wants to be on here and they want to receive emails too so i can add them there i can add in any other fax numbers phone numbers pager number y'all you can put their pager number in here and then i'm going to unclick reverse prospecting because i want to explain to you what that is Reverse prospecting means if I if it's if if they're opted in to reverse prospecting, that means when Jeff Farmer puts a new listing on the MLS and it matches the search criteria that Betty Buyer is looking for, he will be able to see when he goes to reverse prospecting the list of agents in the valley who have a buyer who his new listing matches their search criteria. So Jeff Farmer may reach out to me and go, hey, I just listed 123 Sesame Street. Reverse prospecting tells me that your client, Betty Buyer, is interested in that type of property. Just wanted to give you a heads up. I'll tell you this, it feels a little big brother when people do that. And I'm not very secretive. So I named my people on here their real names. So I'm just a little paranoid that one day an agent is just going to Facebook message my client and be like, hey, I just listed a property at 123 Sesame Street. Would you like to come take a look at it on Saturday, right? And if I haven't been terribly communicative with my buyer or my buyer is looking for something very niche and it hasn't come up in six months, I may not have stayed as connected to my buyer as I would have liked to. So I'm just not gonna allow that toehold for another agent to contact or know anything about my buyer, okay? So I'm gonna unclick reverse prospecting. If you want the too long didn't read, just uncheck reverse prospecting anytime you're putting a contact in. And I'm going to save these changes. Now, there are three parts that are required to be able to send subscriptions to your buyer. And by subscription, I mean 
<clears throat> I have a buyer, Betty Buyer. I want to look like the consummate professional. So anytime a property comes on the market matching what Betty Buyer is looking for, I want Betty to receive an email immediately saying, hey, Betty, a property just came on the market matching your search criteria. Click below to take a look at it and let me know if you'd like to take a tour. That's what I'm setting up right now. So it needs the who are you sending it to, what are you sending to them, and how are you sending it to them. So what we've set up now is the who. Betty is our client. Now the system needs to know what is Betty looking for. So I'm going to go to searches and subscriptions. That's just a tab, two over from contact details. And now there are no searches affiliated with Betty Buyer. I'm going to set up the search. And I'm going to tell you in this market, I'm probably just going to put area and price. I remember a time when I would get as detailed as replacement tilt in windows, uh, all heat sources except oil. Like, I mean, Lord, y'all, I would have 20 search criteria in here. Now I am area and price. Thank you. Because in another type of market, <clears throat> if I didn't go 12 search criteria deep, they were getting 70 listings and were overwhelmed. Now I can put in area and price and cross my fingers, they get a listing this week. Okay. So I'm going to add a saved search. I'm going to make a search for them. Okay. So I'm going to go here and do create new quick search. Now you may see here, there's Ashley multifamily already on the list. I make searches for myself. I'm my own client. So I'm going to have searches for myself. You can even do searches for specific addresses. So if somebody says, hey, Liz, there's a house down the street that I think is going to be a foreclosure. Can you let me know the minute it goes on the market? I absolutely can. I can do a search and save it for that specific address. And then the minute it goes live on the MLS, your buyer and you are going to get notification of it. That's a great way to not have to check the MLS hot sheet every morning for the rest of your life, waiting for that one specific property to come on the market. Okay. So let's create a new quick search for Betty Buyer. She's just a regular buyer. I'm going to create a new quick search. I click that button. There are currently one. Oh, I'm in land. Hold on. I'm going to switch to residential. If you never knew up here in the left-hand corner, you can switch from land to residential. And quite frankly, I just got on there and was like, 1,200 listings. Yes, but that's land. So we're going to go to residential where we have 389 options. I know, just take a moment. So now I'm going to say I want actives. Obviously, Betty wants to buy something. I'm going to pick my major area. She wants to be in Roanoke County. And I'm going to tell Betty, Betty, I know you want Southwest. But may I have your permission, because there are so few listings that are going to come to you every week, may we just keep it to Roanoke County right now? Let's just keep it to Roanoke County and put in your price. And if you find that you're becoming overwhelmed with available homes, I will then restrict it down to just Southwest County. But I don't want you to get discouraged if you're not getting a listing for a week. So we're going to do Roanoke County. In the list price, I'm going to put in a range. And I always, always overshoot my client's price range by $5,000. That's not because I want to upsell them. But in other markets, typically, I would say to them, I know that the list price is out of your budget range, but we could always make an offer for less. So I'm teaching you guys skills for, for the rest of your career. In this particular market, they're likely not going to get a house for under list price, but they may be willing at this great interest rate to stretch their budget just a little bit if the house is perfect. And that's how I pitch it to them. I would hate for you to miss the absolute perfect house if we didn't put in just a tiny bump higher than what you're looking for. And I don't put zero in this first field. If they're looking for a $175,000 house in Southwest County, I'm probably going to put $100,000 to 
And when I do that, I'm likely going to be done in this market. You see, there are five homes matching that criteria. Nothing in Southwest County. Five homes. And I'm not even convinced this one over here by the airport isn't listed incorrectly. Do you see this one right here? Maybe that's in Roanoke County. Maybe There's it's a little not. little pocket over there that's yeah. still Roanoke County. Yep. So just by going with price point and area, there's only five houses. So that's going to be enough search criteria for me in this market for a buyer. So when I'm finished setting up their search criteria, I'm going to come over here to save. And I'm going to click save at the top because I don't want to save the listings. I want to save the search I've created. So I'm clicking save. And it's going to save. Is this a new search or an existing search? It's going to be a new one. And I'm going to call it Betty Buyer. And I may call it Betty Buyer Roanoke County because she may also want me to be searching in Franklin County. Okay. I may divide it up into two separate searches for her. Or perhaps she's willing to accept duplexes or single families. So I may have to be doing a multifamily search for her, but also a residential search for her. And I can do two of those. And then I'm going to maybe give myself a reminder here. Most of the time I will. Um, in this case, it's not much. I'm going to say Roanoke County, 100,000 to 180,000. That's all there is. In another type of market, I may have in here, not oil heat, um, basement, uh, fenced yard. I may have all of that in there. And then it wants to know what client. It already knows I'm working on Betty because I came here from her contact management card. If I had started from the other direction and started with the saved search, it would not know what contact this is going to be associated with. So I would have to tell it. But in this case, I came from setting up the contact first, then attaching a search to it. So I'm going to save this and add a subscription. I could just save it and they wouldn't get auto emails. They wouldn't get subscription emails. But in this case, that's what I want to do. I want to save this search and I want to add a subscription to it. So here's my subscription to Betty Buyer. You see, it's going to automatically default to also send me a copy. I also can add a new contact. If at this moment I go, oh no, I forgot about her fiance. I can click add new contact. I can do a quick add and add her fiance into my contact management from here. And it would add them onto this email, okay? It also is gonna default to weekly. Send an email once a day. I don't want that. I want ASAP. So I'm gonna switch it to ASAP so that the minute that house hits the MLS, Betty's getting an email and I'm getting an email, okay? That's how I shine and I call Betty and I go, oh my gosh, Betty, did you just see that house that went on the, on the market for Broad Street just a few minutes ago? Okay, the value in that to my buyer is enormous. She thinks I am just hitting that refresh button 24 hours a day. She doesn't know I'm getting a copy of this. The MLS let me know it went on the market. And so now she thinks I'm a rock star because I got her that information minutes after it went live on the MLS, okay? So I have said I want it to go out ASAP. I'm fine with it sending her the residential view. You could select other styles of view. The residential view shows area, status, list price, total finished square footage, bedroom, bathrooms, address, subdivision, listing office, listing member, sold date, and list date. That's fine. Uh, and that would, it obviously would only have those other, those last few items if it was a closed sale. So now I have um, sort of a thing I write all the time. You can see it's auto save some of my things. I may call this homes to view. I may call it listings to view. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to say, Hello, Betty. And I want you to remember, she's going to get this email every single time the MLS sends her notice that something has come on the market. So I don't say good evening. I don't say good morning. 
I don't say happy Friday, okay? Because she's gonna get this every time that a new house comes on the market. So I say, hello, Betty. And I say below is a link to listing, and then I may put an S there, matching your current, if I could type, current search criteria. Good day, y'all. And then I'm going to include it. And the reason why is I want to remind Betty every time what her search criteria is. If I say Roanoke County between 100,000 and 180,000, if she's looking at that every single time I send her an email and she's remembering what her search criteria was that she gave me three months ago, she may call me and say, you know what, Ashley, can we bump that up to $190,000? She's not going to remember what she told me three months ago. She knows her general area of price she'd like to stay in, but she doesn't remember what the search criteria is set to. And that has happened to me a lot of times where a buyer calls me back and goes, you know what, let's open it up to 190,000. Let's open it up to 200,000 because they're just not finding what they, what they want and need at the price point they put in. So I'm going to mention what my search criteria is in here. And then I'm going to say, if you see one, that sparks your interest, shoot me a text message or email and I will happily set up a showing. And then I end with, y'all my OCD means I have to go back and fix those errors. And then I'm gonna say, I look forward to hearing from you soon, okay? Now I know just from experience that the MLS is going to insert a link to the listing or listings right below my message. And that is why I have referenced that below is a link to listings. It's gonna be a hyperlink, so it's gonna be blue. So it's gonna be obvious for them to click it, but I just wanna look like this is something I prepared for them. So I'm gonna reference that the link is below. And then I'm gonna go down a little and I'm gonna say save. Would you like to email these five listings now? And almost always I say, yes, email them now. I'm gonna click this and it's gonna send those five listings to Betty Buyer right now. Moving forward from there, anytime one comes on the market or has a price reduction that puts it into her search criteria, she's gonna get an email about it. Now pretend I click email these listings now because I don't know who owns Betty Buyer at gmail.com. So now, when I go to contact management and I go to Betty Buyer, I'm going to search for Betty. Oh, she's in here a couple of times because I've used her so many times. I'm going to go here to Betty Buyer. This is the one we set up this morning. When I go to searches and subscriptions, there is her saved search. Okay. Here is her subscription. I now know there's a subscription going. I can add another subscription in case I have another search for her for maybe Franklin County. But also here is my search parameters. That is recorded for me here because it wants me to remember what I put in for her. I can also anytime click this view totals button and see what's available. I can also for my own sanity, in another type of market, I can hit reset time and new view. And it'll go back to seeing what is fresh, not things that have been on the market for 100 days. Now, y'all all know I'm talking about a, another market. Oh, man, did I just, oh, okay. I'm going to stop screen sharing and then fix because I just got out of MLS by accident. And I'm going to open it up to questions, and then I'm happy to show it to you again from the search first and then the contact. Anybody have any questions about that? Are y'all completely overwhelmed? Ashley. Yes. I just want to tell, I don't have a question, but um, I just want to let anybody really new. I mean, I'm new, but anybody newer, this is a great tool. I love it. And it lets people um, casually 
view while making you look like you're really on top of things. And it doesn't seem like you're putting a lot of pressure on them. And I have set this up for a couple of people. And when they see something, um, they definitely come to you and ask more questions about the listing. So I, I just love this tool. That's all. And I do set things up for myself as well. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. And and Rhonda, that's an excellent um, uh, marketing point um, that you are the consummate professional bringing these properties to them faster than anybody else, faster mm -hmm. even than them finding on Zillow, because the minute yeah. it goes on MLS, it's in their email. Now, the other uh, sort of marketing spin, I'll put it on it sometimes, is if I have a reluctant potential buyer client and they're like, I mean, we're just kind of looking, we're just looking, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we'll call you if we see something, you know, mm -hmm. what I'll say is, well, you know what, I can put your, what you're looking for in our MLS and I don't even have to touch it. It'll just email you if yeah. something comes on the market. Like I, I won't right. even be, I, I'm not going to pay it any attention, but if it emails you and you see something you like, why don't you give me a shout? Yes. They are much more likely to go, okay, okay, all right. It's no pressure. What they don't want is they don't want to feel like they owe me something because I'm on the computer every morning being like, refresh, refresh. What property came on the market yeah. for those new people? Um, they right. want it to be a little more of a, of a buffer there. Uh, yep. they, don't, they don't want to create a relationship with me. So right. I will use it as another way to say on the other end of that, um, it's no, no problem. I literally, mm -hmm. I literally put, set it and forget it. Like I don't even yep. check on it. Yep. Okay. Anybody have any other questions about that? Would y'all like for me to do it from the opposite direction? And I will not be offended if you bop out of here. Um, um, but I'm certainly happy to show it to you. Can I just chime in for just a second? Of course. All that automation is great. But once you go under contract, please take that off. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. And I will show you that right now because you want to deactivate their searches as soon as they go under contract, because I will tell you, they're going to call you four days later and be like, oh my God, Ashley, did you see that property that just went on the market? I think I like it better than the one we bought. Now you're in a pickle, you know, um, because you sent it to them. So let's go over that. Excellent point, Jennifer. Let me... And Miki wants to know if I can email the email template. Yes, I'd be yes, more than thank happy. You. Just thank giving you. me a thumbs up. Uh, is that just, you love what I'm putting out here, Jeff? Or do you have a question? Okay, shoot me something in the chat window. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And show you how to deactivate them now. Come on screen, here we go. All right, back on it. So let's go to contact management. Let's find Betty Buyer from today. And y'all, I'm the best agent in the world. I've already got her under contract, sweet. So I'm gonna go to her contact card and I'm gonna click deactivate. And it's going to say subscriptions and portals. And I'm going to say, absolutely deactivate both of those. I don't want her to even know real estate exists anymore. So I'm going to deactivate her. Now, when I go to Betty Buyer, you will see that she has them, but they're not going to be going out anymore. And I may go a step further and just take off her subscription. I don't care if her saved search hangs out forever. That's fine with me but I'm probably going to remove her subscription entirely. That way the computer can't have an update and then decide, oh, she's back on. So I'm gonna remove the subscription because adding the subscription is very simple. You spend most of your time setting up the search. It's trying to figure out where she wants to be, what she wants to buy. That is what takes up more time. So now I've deactivated her. I can always um, get in there and add another subscription if, her property falls through and now we have to buy another property. All right. And Alma says, yep, to send her the templates as well. Absolutely, happy to do it. Um, yes, happy to do all of that, Alma. And who else has questions about subscriptions and would y'all like for me to show it to you from the other side or would you rather me 
touch on portals and setting up a portal for your buyer client. I'm happy to do that portals on another day, or I'm also happy to go ahead and just do them today if y'all would like to follow along and, and learn that today. Y'all give me uh, your two cents on what you'd like to have happen. I would like to see the portals. Okay. Yeah, happy I would like to see the portals as well, please. Okay, I'm happy to do it. So I will tell you the portals are just a, I like to call it a baby MLS. So it's like a baby MLS for your client. And it lets, it lets them look at a limited amount of um, information that looks like the MLS. So let's share my screen again. I know I got y'all's head spinning here and I'm gonna show you what a portal looks like for your buyer client. So if I'm here on Betty Buyer, I can go to the portal tab and I can say, okay, let's turn on her portal and let's invite her to the portal, okay? And it automatically gives some generic language there to her that says, I've set up a customized website called a portal for you. Using this site, you can keep track of listings, send me messages and keep track of listings you like and dislike. Follow the link below and enter your login information to begin using your portal. Once you are on the website, be sure to save the address as a favorite so you can easily visit again. In the lower right panel of the home screen, you will be able to change your password to whatever you like. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna change part of this. I'm gonna take out the send me messages and I'm gonna get down here at the bottom and I'm gonna say, reminder, I would prefer you communicate with me via email and I'm gonna say ashley at wainwrightco.com or phone or text messaging. Please do not message me through the portal. You know why? I don't wanna be on MLS checking for messages. I already have to check Zillow messages, Facebook messages, realtor.com messages, email messages, text messages, voicemail messages. Do I also wanna be checking messaging on my MLS? No. So I'm telling my client how I want them to communicate with me, okay? So I'm gonna be adding that to my portals. And then we're gonna click send. And that's gonna send the email portal link to Betty Buyer, allowing her to opt into the portal. Now let's see if it will let me show you what a portal looks like. Okay, so now I can click view portal here and I get a sneak peek of what it looks like on Betty's end. So I'm gonna click view portal. It's branded to me because I have put my branding into the MLS under my profile tab. And here are the five listings that are available for Betty Buyer right now. They're here because they are the results of her saved search. Now, Betty can say, I don't, I don't, I want to hide that one. We went and looked at it. It is not suitable. I don't want to keep seeing it. So Betty can click mark this listing as hidden. She also can star one and she can list it as a saved one. She can still go look at the hidden ones with this folder over here on the left, but I can peek into Betty Byers portal anytime I want to take a peek at which ones she saved. Then I can look a little harder at those and I can say, hey Betty, I noticed that you really love that one on Bedford Road in Venton. Would you like to go take a look at it? So this just lets me take a peek into her portal to see what she sees. Now, what she's able to see is if she clicks on the MLS number, she gets to see the public version of our MLS sheet. This is why I call it a baby MLS. She's getting to look at everything except for the protected fields that are on the MLS. And the protected fields are things like owner name, owner phone number private remarks between the realtor and the realtor, okay? Those are the things that should never be displayed to the general public. So this is going to show her just the public version. She can also go to photos 
and look through all the photos that are available on the MLS. And then even cooler, she can hit this tab here for CRS tax info. That's the same tool I use as a real estate agent on the MLS. And when she clicks CRS tax info, well, it did not work, y'all. Sometimes it doesn't. What was the address of that property? 340 Raleigh Avenue. Oh, got a typo. Sorry, y'all. 340. So here's 340 Raleigh Avenue. She can submit that. And then she can also see what is on the GIS in Roanoke County for this property. Here's sales history. Here's tax assessment history. Um, there's mortgage history on here. Um, there is uh, the square footage, the year bill, all of that is on here. This is pulled from the municipality websites. It also shows the listing archive of any other time it had been listed on the market. Mm -hmm. And it shows the FEMA flood zone map mapping. And you can even click on this hyperlink right here. And you can go over to the FEMA site and look up information on that property. There it is. So lots of value in this portal that you can set up for your client. Now, this may be too much for them. It may be too little for them. It depends on the client. Uh, mm -hmm. Clients have different levels of communication and different levels of research they want to do on the properties they're looking into. Okay. You'll know by asking your clients questions, how deep dive they want to do on every single property that they're interested in but these resources are available. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing, let you guys ask any questions. I know I gave you guys like a lot today, a lot. Um, so that is why we record these and that's why we put them on the YouTube channel so that you can go back and follow along again. If you can do one thing by habit, it is every time you meet a buyer, put them in somewhere, put mm -hmm. them in, set up a search and put them on a subscription. Mm -hmm. Then go back every once in a while and look at your dashboard on MLS. You're going to have a list of saved searches. You're going to have a list of contacts. Go ahead and just leaf through them again. You might go, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about Ben Harper. You know, um, it's just a nice visual for you to be able to make sure you're not letting anybody fall through the cracks. Okay. All right. Questions. Anybody have anything? Yes, Rhonda, please. How often do you use portals? Not terribly often. Not terribly often. It depends often. on the okay. client. If I have a buyer who's just super involved, I know they've set up an account on Zillow. I'm going to ask them. I'm going to say, hey, have you set up an account on Zillow yet? Have you set up an account on Realtor.com yet? And if they go, yes, both. I've got them on both. And they're both sending me emails when things come on the market. That's a client I'm going to set up a portal for. Okay. Yep. For Thank me, you. sometimes it can mean more work for me because now they're trying to message me through the portal and I don't see the message because I'm not mm. checking my messages on MLS terribly often. Um, that sometimes it can make me look unprofessional, mm. <laughs> you gotcha. know, if I'm not careful with it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. But I definitely do a saved search and a subscription on every buyer. Yes. Love it. Even if they are one, like, let's say I got a buyer who, listen, their full-time job is looking for a house for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. I may be working other buyers. They're not working any other buyers. They're working themselves. Mm -hmm. If they are the type of client who is always texting me, hey, what about this one? Hey, what about this one? I'm absolutely putting them on a subscription because I want them to know I know about it too. I knew mm -hmm. about it fast too. I don't want to feel like a, I don't want them to think I'm a passive agent where they one day say at a cookout, oh, I had to send her every house we ended up looking at, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I want there to be that standard that even if they're looking to, I obviously am looking mm -hmm. because quite frankly, as a real estate agent, if I'm not looking for houses for them, what am I doing? You know, I don't want right. to be a reactive agent. I want to be a proactive agent. And even mm -hmm. if they find it at the same time, they're getting that MLS from me. They know I'm on it too. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, Liz, thank you. She says, thank you. I have used subscriptions for 11 years, but this was very helpful. Good. Oh, great. Glad. I never know 
y'all i just i never know i'm gonna teach everything and i never know what's i don't ever know how robustly everybody's using each product because heaven knows there are 50 jillion real estate products you could be using mm -hmm. and subscriptions quite frankly is one of our most powerful tools that we have Love it. <clears throat> good all right well then y'all have an awesome awesome day